welcome back to episode 24 of the X-Men Monday podcast. My name is Ryan. With me is Alan, as always. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Now that, you're up, that, now that we're all worked up after talking off air about Justice League, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which we'll be, uh, we're going to do a, probably wait a couple weeks or so, uh, but we are going to definitely be uh, recording an episode on that. But that's not why we're here. Um, but before we get into all the other stuff, you can find all of our episodes at columbuscommonscorner.podbean.com and on iTunes as well. Uh, we can subscribe, rate, and review us. We'd greatly appreciate it. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Comics Corner Pod. And we also have a website, which is columbuscommonscorner.tumblr.com, where you can find our X-Men Monday reviews uh, and other written reviews as well, plus the uh, episodes also. Uh, and I, and I, I always kind of skip out on this part and i forget to mention it sometimes but we are a spoilers podcast uh so you have if you have not read the x-men books that were released uh last week definitely hit pause come back or if you want to hear our thoughts before you go out and buy the books go ahead and stick around and another thing you know you know what that is alan what's that we are proud members of the comics podcast network and we uh, greatly appreciate all their support over there but yes before we get into some news though i just wanted to uh, quickly mention I'm going back and reading Uncanny X-Force from the, the 2012 run by Rick Remender uh, for the first time. Wow. Uh, what a... Have you read this before? No, I have not read it before. Oh, boy, oh boy. You'd, I've, I've you'd been love told it. that I should, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the Marvel apps. So definitely, um, when you get a chance, definitely dive into that. But it actually, it's funny because it's making me miss Wolverine more and more. When I see him in some of these older books, I've been reading Uncanny Avengers and Uncanny X Force right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, who would have thought I would have said that I was missing Wolverine? Oh yeah, who would have thought that? <laughs> that like wow. So that means you really can't wait for uh, classic OG Wolverine to nah. come back. Nah. <laughs> uh, if they get rid of Old Man Logan, yes, but we cannot have well, Wolverine and Old Man Logan. In the same universe. Well, that's 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 kind of what I meant. I was kind of saying like, um, yeah, let's let's get a oh, let's get rid of old man Logan and, and just have classic OG Wolverine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just wanted to drop that real quick because I have <clears throat> excuse me, I've really been enjoying that series so far. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get in some news though. So, oh boy, you ready for this one now? I, so, quick question: Have you did you hear any of the news that were released this week regarding X Men related stuff? No. All right. So we are. I mean, we already knew this was coming, but this is Weapon H gives Hulk Vereen hybrid his own series in March. The new Weapon H number one, written by Greg Pak and artist Corey Smith, announced at New York Comic Con 2017, has now been pegged for a March 2018 debut and will hit shelves in March. It will mm. feature the Hulk Wolverine hybrid that debuted in the Weapons of Mutant Destruction crossover. That should say series, not crossover because that was a series <laughs> <laughs> and i know you and rob would kill me if i didn't mention this news because i know you guys are everyone's excited for this mm-hmm. um but yeah the only reason i put it in here is that it said wolverine <laughs> I, I i figured so i i gathered that much like he's only uh, got this in there because of the whole uh wolverine being tied onto this um are, are, am I supposed to be surprised? Like, are, are any of us, honestly, at this point, supposed to be surprised at this? Hitting this soon. Three months. Four months. Well, I mean, hey. Mm. People people like your fanatics for them, and so they decided, like, you know, let's not make them wait too long. I give it eight issues before it's canceled. Eight issues before it's canceled? Yep. Um, I am not going to partake in that bet, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I see that you, you don't give them a full year before they get rid of the book. No. They'll probably spin off into something else or something else. Something else will happen with that shit. Maybe something else will spin into it. Mm. But continue with the train, <laughs> and you may see a trend here. Uh, where's Wolverine? Marvel brings after credit scene to comic books in January, Alan. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, the same reaction I did uh, when I saw this. Uh, okay. Uh, Marvel has revealed the next whereabouts of the original Wolverine, who returned to Marvel Legacy number one, and they're borrowing a trick from Marvel Studios for it. Wolverine will appear in a series of after credit scenes in some Marvel titles that, uh, when in read in sequence, will touch on Wolverine's status quo. 
a la Marvel Studios' um, ubiquitous stinger scenes. Oh, the stinger scenes will appear in the following titles, starting in January, with more unnamed titles to follow. And what would you think the first three titles would be? Um, I would have thought that the first three titles would be some X titles, but the way that that is worded and phrased, I have a, a idea that they're probably going to put him inside of some of the books that may not be selling so well. <laughs> they get some kind of bump. Um, what what are the first three titles though? You're close, but the opposite of the worst selling. So the first one is Captain America number six ninety seven. Oh, Mighty okay. Thor, number 703, and Amazing Spider-Man, number 794. Oh, you would so think, some of the heavy hitters. You would think they would put it in X-Books. Yeah, but, Cap kind of makes sense. Cap kind of sort of makes sense because he has a connection with Wolverine. But the other two, huh? No, X-Books. Should be X-Books. Yeah, so, sorry Marvel, fuck you. I'm not buying into your tricks of buying that three ninety nine book to get, you know, a half a page or a page and a half of what's going on with him. Because I don't even read those books. So that's another thing. Like if you read those books, you're already mm. getting that extra the extra flavor. But if you're not and you do want to pay that, I think that's just I mean, we'll see how many page counts it is, but I don't think it'll be I mean it's a after quote unquote after credit scene. Yeah, so are there, are there going to be like six pages of credits and all of a sudden, whoop, where's Wolverine? Mm. Just when That's I think like Marvel's trying, trying to turn things around, they come and throw these things at us. I'm just like, why? Why, why, why? Why? Well, I, for, to, to slightly, unfortunately, argue for for what they're doing... Uh, people like me are interested to see where where Wolverine is. Ever since he came back, I've been interested to see what's going on. Um, this for me could have worked. Like I said, it had to been an X title. Had it been an X title, I think I would have been really excited about this. The fact that it's Damn. not, um, I don't think I'm very excited, especially because for the most part, the X some of the X characters know that something happened and he's back. Yeah, gee. so. Gene, particular, <laughs> but it, it, so it would be kind of cool to see, like, okay, at the end of X Men Blue, in credit scene, at the end of Jean Grey's book, in credit scene, or in that um, case, like um, Resur- Phoenix Resurrection, yeah, um, Gold or something. I don't know any X book to me would 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 have been pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure how. Yeah. How the, how wise it is to do with these other books? Because if I'm correct, the only one you read on this list is what Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, and now that I think about it, Spider-Man kind of does make sense a little bit too. Um, only because for a brief moment, two issues, uh, Wolverine was on a team with Spider-Man when they were the Fantastic Four with Ghost Rider and Hulk. <laughs> right. So that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, kind of. Kind of. But you see how far I had to stretch to make that yeah, make sense, though. Yeah, that's like a. I had to, I had to do a deep, deep, deep Marvel cut to make that sense. Make that sense right there. Um, yeah. Uh. <sighs> Good old, old Marvel. Good old Marvel. Good old Marvel. Mm. That's all the news that we got, and I figured we'd touch on that. Because where is Wolverine? Where is he? We'll we'll find out, I guess. But, uh, you got anything else on that, or you want to go ahead and get into some books? Let's jump into some books. All right, what are we talking about first, Danger? Cable number 151, written by Ed Brisson. Art from John Mullen, Jesus averted with letters from BC's Travis Lanham. Cable and the team decided to squash the beef with Selena and the Externals. After regrouping and doing a little bit of recruitment, uh, they decided to go track down an external living in the woods who tells them that someone has actually figured out how to kill externals permanently. Um, we are then treated to a end credit scene and a reveal of Blink. And I'm still digging where this title is going. Um, it's continuing that whole like noir, noir feel, whodunit um, type of tale, which I'm you know, really enjoying. And Cable, we're actually seeing a Cable who's actually strategizing, um, opposed to James Robinson's like first five issues. And he actually you know has a head on his shoulder as well. Uh, but did you see any sort of like change in Cable since re- starting this new arc? 
Uh, yeah, completely different cable. Just exactly what you just said. Uh, he's he's thinking more. He's actually leading people more. He's not jumping right into into the the dirt head first. Right. Uh, the cable we were dealing with from the series first started those first five issues. He was just like, Rambo. okay, I'm here. Let's fight. Yep. <laughs> Rambo. Yeah, in this Rambo. Case. This cable. Was, he's like, I'm here. Let's look at everything and think about a, a mm-hmm. good way to actually get into it before we go there. We, we might be able to sneak in. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to necessarily shoot. That's so, why yeah, he wanted definitely. To, the, that's why he wanted to leave. That he didn't want to fight with Selena. And then he's like, you know, they got we got what we needed. We're going on. But yeah, this is definitely continuing that that slow burn mystery. Uh, very clue clue type of. Uh, I feel like I'm watching clue play out. <laughs> and I gotta say, yeah. I mean, and I will say that the I think the dialogue right now is definitely carrying um, the story. And it, it's you know because there's so much to like kind of you can try to pick up on clues along the way. Granted, it's very um, mysterious right now. Like, I, I'm still like left in the dark exactly what's going on. Uh, but what are some of your overall thoughts before I continue? Um, yeah, definitely do like the fact that it, there's twists and turns here. It's a mystery. We don't necessarily know exactly what's going on, and, and this is only the, the like the second issue of this this arc. Right. But we're we're slowly given bits and pieces to lead us to the next part of the mystery, which grows it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, in the last issue, we were surprised to see that okay, all the externals are actually still alive. So we're left thinking like, okay, well she's probably going to come back. Um, in this issue, we found out no, whoever this is actually knows how to really kill externals. Yeah, yeah. We'll so see that later on, yeah, the plot the plot thickens. Yes, it does. And I love that the they're actually balancing uh, two separate missions in here as well. And I thought oh, that yeah. was done well. I mean, because you got Shatterstar who's doing that sort of fast paced action um, little subplot, and then Cable's uh, the more laid back approach. And I got to say, right now this book is standing out from the rest. I was talking to uh, Rob and Anthony. Um, like late, early in this week, and because I mentioned how like I'm, some of the books like going back to when I was talking about earlier, like reading Uncanny X Force right now, um, some of these stories are like a lacking originality. Uh, other than I think I would say um, Astonishing X Men and this book right now are the only two X Men books personally for me um, that are, are standing out from the rest. Uh, but and also we'll get I, there's one of my favorite scenes uh, lately as well uh, in this entire. Uh, series or not series, but entire um, issue that will that will continue later on once we get into some of the juicy stuff. Uh, but you got any other other overall thoughts before we kind of get into you know what we liked, what we didn't like about the issue? Uh, no, so far they're just they're they're crafting this very well, and this is a welcome change um, to the cable series compared to what we've been getting. Because I really did not enjoy those first five issues, and I wasn't sure how much of a change they would be able to make when they got to this arc. Right. And it's like a completely different book, completely different character, completely different feel, and I love this feel better than um, what they were doing in the start. Yeah, and I'm hoping if like people who did read those first five issues or started with uh, maybe jumped off at the third one and never returned even after Legacy started, um, mm-hmm. if you are listening to this and you're one of those people, definitely you know do give this another chance because. Day and night, day and night at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but kind of starting from the top, and what were some of your your uh, your moments that you really enjoyed? Um, honestly, there was uh, the the moments I really enjoyed were first of first off, you, you didn't even notice that like after they decided to leave Selena and the externals and go back to their little secret HQ. Um, it looked like Dupe, Shatterstar, and Cable just got the shower. Did you notice that? Like oh, they're yeah. sitting there with the towels, <laughs> with and the Dupe towel. is like throughout this book, Dupe is hilarious in the background. Um, obviously, you know, my never, notes is uh, Dupe's workout towel. <laughs> his, his workout towel, but just in general, the stuff he's doing in the background. There's a part where he's like chasing a butterfly. Mm. Like some of his facial expressions are just like golden. Like I love what they do. They with Dupe in the background. Um. I love the when I said they did some recruiting. That was part of my was this thing that I like too. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed the conversation that Cable had with Armor when he went and talked to Armor. Yeah, that was great. And I, that was a really good conversation. And I definitely enjoyed the fact that we finally have seen X twenty three in this book. And um, yes, for those listening, I said X twenty three because they haven't said it, but this is definitely when she was still trigger sent um mm. hungry yes this is when she was the, the killing machine it's the killing machine lord this is not the lord we have now yeah just going back to the uh the bunker real quick that was um yes one of my 
not favorite scenes of the issue, but it was really cool. Like, I love, I really dug the, the panel and script progression during the meeting as, when they were returning to the bunker. Um, mm-hmm. Just like the the way everything was motioned and how they would walk to um, the the screen that showed all the other externals they were going to track down. I thought it was just a natural progression and you know, really good stuff going on there. And then when we we also see um, on the boat in the Atlantic Ocean um, when Celine pulls. Who we find out later on, I kind of had a feeling it was Blink uh, when I kind of saw the pink and the warp time. Uh, I figured she was pulling her in there, um, but I did not expect her to be on the the villainous side um, right off the exactly. bat. Exactly. So yeah, that was like the biggest twist um, of the by the end of the issue. And a nice little slow burn to that wasn't like bombastic or anything. It was just uh, it was subtle. I thought. It was definitely very subtle. Um, it's funny because she said she's been sitting on this weapon for a while. Mm-hmm. So it kind of makes me wonder what is this is a different version of Blink. Uh, what version of Blink could this be? Could this be another time to space mutant? Right. I'm glad you brought that up because um, I was going to bring that up as well. Like, I'm not too familiar with the externals. So who knows how they're playing with continuity? I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the externals or kind of how what blink's relationship to the externals um are you familiar with them to that to understand like maybe there's how the continuity is working no i am not familiar enough to understand how the continuity is working yeah because i wonder how this will play up into the future into the present where we are right now um since he has gone into the past so yeah i'm sure whoever's you know deep within the externals um Maybe they see the continuity is perfect for them, or maybe it's a little bit flawed. But it is a comic book, so we'll, you know, we'll definitely see. If, if you are familiar with them, let us know. Uh, but yeah, Deep's workout towel, awesome. Celine's uh, pulling Blinken, awesome. Um, I did love the scene as, as well between Cable and Armor. Um, it felt like a normal conversation being played out in a comic book. And like you were saying, mm-hmm. with Dupe just doing random things, like chasing the butterfly. Um, that was a nice little touch, that whole little panel. Oh, yeah. Um, there was another part where um, I think it might have been when they finally got to the cabin. Yes. It was when they were outside the cabin. So they, like, he was posted up against the tree and they're at, the cable was asking questions. Dude was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, that actually leads into my favorite scene. Um, going, oh. When they're at the cabin. I uh-huh. thought it was perfect. Uh, it I thought it was uh, they used the cabin to like, set the mood, like using the fireplace, the tea. And just the conversation. What was uh, what was that external's name? Um, which one was oh, you talking about Burke? Burke, yes. Um, yeah, just the conversation that he was having. Like he was, you know, essentially he was just tired of living. He was tired of being an external, and he had made a deal with whoever was in the shadow, uh, mm-hmm. and that, that killed him in the end. And then just the way that like you see his hand placed on the uh, the window as Cable's leaving. That's when he tells him like your friends are in a trap right now. Uh, I thought that was awesome really good <laughs> oh yeah the that see, whole like, conversation the blade the blade on the top of the uh yeah blade. the hidden the hidden knife yep the hidden knife but he was the whole conversation because he's the one external who wants to die mm-hmm. he doesn't enjoy the apparent eternal life that they have um he talks about they talk about all the times that he's died and been, been killed and thinking that it, this would be the last time and then it turns out like no it's not the last time he's back yet again so it, it was interesting to see that to have that conversation yeah for him it, to say that yeah it really took me out of the not took me out of the book it took me out of the book in a cool way like oh i didn't really expect this sort of deep mm-hmm. conversation between the, this external i feel it, i figured it would just be you know always continuing to ramp up so this one kind of like chilled it out for a little bit until he was like, yeah, your friends are in a trap, and that's when then things kick right back into gear. I, I really like that progression there. I, I love the progression. It definitely did the same thing to me. It took me out because I was not expecting anything deep to come out of this story. Mm-hmm. And that was a deep conversation. A really deep conversation. Yeah, it gave us a reason um, for him to you know, work with whoever is killing, whoever's figured out to kill, how to kill externals. Uh, to mm-hmm. murder him, and I was like, I kind of felt uh, sad for him by, by the end. I was like, oh, damn. At least he got what he wanted. He was tired of living as far as being an external. So yeah, it was a little emotional scene there, which I really appreciated. And the fact that Cable, uh, and how I said earlier how Cable, the the, the balancing of the separate missions and like the feel mm-hmm. to each one, um, you have Cable with armor and dupe. I don't, was armor or dupe in the, in the cabin? 
Now that I think about it. Oh, yeah, he was. He was sitting in the rocking yeah, chair. Yeah, he was, he was in the cabin, yeah. <laughs> Chilling in the rocking chair, drinking yeah. his hot cocoa. Yeah, I didn't see him the first time. That's funny. Uh, but, yeah, it's just so relaxed. And, I don't know, it was really cool to uh, how they played both of those scenes. Because then we do pick up, uh, where did they go? They went to the, in Mongolia. And that's where Shatterstar and Longshot are with X-23. And X-23 has no problem. She's like, all right, I'm going to walk in here. We're going Because they see a couple dead bodies. And X-23 is like, yep, I'm going to go ahead and walk in here. we got no troubles. You're with me. <laughs> and she doesn't really talk much in this issue either. But when she does, it's it works because it is X-23. And you're going back legacy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say that that's what definitely hammered at home that this is X twenty three. This is not all new Wolverine. She has nothing to say. She's a killer machine. She yeah. just rushes right into the building to just kill everybody and, and the shower stars like, Yeah, I like her. hmm Definitely, yeah. And I also get like a whole like mission impossible uh feel to this as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just me. Oh no, no, it did have a little mission impossible feel to it. Yeah. But I will say, I one I don't want to say it's like a nitpick or a complaint. The art is cool. I really, I am enjoying the art because it does kind of have that '90s feel to it. But it mm-hmm. seems like I think it's if he's using digital pencils, it yep. doesn't feel it feels off um, at at certain points. Like some of the hair or the um, even the head the the heads on the characters. Just I don't know some of the lines just. This feels unnatural, you know what I mean? Because it's like opposed to digital pencils to natural pencils. Um, I see what he's trying to do, kind of maybe bringing that 90s vibe with a modern touch. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's the colorist as well. Who knows what, what it could be, honestly. What's funny is that we have had this conversation before on another x title about um, whether or not to fully use digital or to try to blend digital with traditional and whether or not it works or not. Yeah. Um, I I think I had more issues the last time I saw it than I did this time. I think it was done in a different way. Uh, if I remember correctly, the last time we had this discussion, it was, I want to say, X-Men Gold. Yeah, it was the Mojo crossover. Like this it was the first part. issue. It first might have second, been the first yeah. or second issue. Yes. Um. And it, there was some spots where I thought it worked and some spots where I didn't think it worked. Um, but I think that the digital, if it was used here, was used differently. It was it, it seemed semi-more natural than in gold. Yeah, I will say that. the In gold, it was more like a, reminded me of like a kind of 3D animation or 3D effect. Yeah, it uh, jumped out deal. more. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just paging through this scene with uh, Cable talking to Armor in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. They Armor's making an appearance in a couple of these books this week. It was nice to see. Oh yeah, very nice to see. Uh, but you got anything else on Cable? Good. Uh, uh, not really getting too much of a story yet. We're kind of getting little pieces, um, which I'm which I'm fine with. I'm, I'm good for the slow burn. I would take this over Jane Ro- James Robinson's five issues any day. Yes, any day. <laughs> I actually want to come back to keep reading this. Opposed to dreading it. But you got anything else on this? Uh, no, nothing else. Okay. Uh, you want to go? Go ahead and give your score on this. Um, I am going to give this a. I'm gonna give it an eight. Um, it kept me involved in it enough. It kept me entranced in it enough. I'm definitely anxious to see where this is going to go. But the. Uh, this didn't. This isn't one of those series that started off with like a, a super bang. Like I, remember I, I got done with the first issue of the series. I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening in the second? Mm-hmm. And here we are at the end of the second issue of this this arc. And I'm still not like that. I do want to see how the mystery unfolds. I am definitely interested to see who it is is killing these extern- externals. Um, that might be the reason why I'm not going higher is because it's a story of the externals, and the externals never really interested me too much. Right, understandable. That's what's up. Uh, I'm right there with you, actually, at, at an eight as well. Um, I can't. I, I'm still li- liking what they're doing, like the slow burn approach. Uh, we're slowly but surely getting our team uh, together. I think by the when they do come together, mm-hmm. it's gonna be fireworks. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to slowly. Like I, I like how they're building the team. Uh, Cable going on certain missions to 
uh, use armor for his and oppose uh, vice versa with um, with um, Shatterstar. And by the way, he had the best dialogue when he was talking to X-23 when he first encountered her. Uh, oh, yeah. What, I want to get back to that page real quick. He's, uh, what does he say right here? When Cable told me uh, about you, a weapon bred to kill, I was skeptical. Warriors are trained, not created in a lab. I was like, ah, look at you, Shatterstar, throwing yeah. a little shade. <laughs> <laughs> try to try to try to mean something. Yep. Uh, well, that was cool. But yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm keeping with an eight. Uh, I'm liking, still liking where it's going. But yeah, like you like you were saying, it hasn't by the end by the oh, the first issue didn't wow me, but I still wanted to continue to see where it's going. I'm in definitely intrigued about uh, Blink and her role. Um, I want to learn more about her. What what version this could be? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also missing Cannibal as well. And I wonder because he was a external at one point, I believe. So I'm wondering if he is going to also, because I'm sure they're going to throw one character they didn't announce at us, and maybe it is uh, Cannibal the way they're kind of slowly but surely hinting at him in the in the story. So that, so that'd be interesting. But yeah, I'm going to go with an eight. And unless you got anything else, we can go ahead and move on. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and move on. All right, what are we talking about next, Danger? Generation X number nine, written by Christina Strain. Art from Amal Carpina and Felipe Sobrero with letters from BC's Clayton Cowles. In the wake of all the destruction, the Gen X team actually gets to do something for a change. Meanwhile, a couple of characters talk about feelings, and Roxy actually helps Jubilee escape. Uh, we then get a, re- a reunion of some of the classic team, and we get the big dum dum dum. So here we are at Generation X number 9, Alan, and I thought that this was a placeholder for the Legacy arc, but, but, it was done in a way that was awesome, because she was able to still tell the story that she's been telling this entire time, Mm -hmm. um, kind of tie some some bows on some of the plots that we've been seeing, uh, and still expanding it as well. Um, I th- I thought we I think maybe my assumption going into this was we were going to get more of implant, uh, but it seemed that this honest, obviously was a placeholder I think for legacy and for um, to get husk and jubilee and chamber and kind of in the mix together to move forward from here. Uh, so they are bringing husk um, into the into the fold, and I think that was probably the point of the last issue. Uh, yeah. So so I do appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I, I is kind of threw me off for a second. Um, but yeah, we do get to see some team cleanup, which is awesome to see. <laughs> um, Finally get to see them doing something. Yes. Um, but at the same time, uh, she, Christina Strain is still showing her ability uh, to develop the characters more, I think, and mm-hmm. getting me more invested. And I was in, into every little side plot that was going on as well. Um, but yeah, and also I question, I wonder how far in advance she knew Legacy would be hitting with the, that particular issue and how mm-hmm. she worked around that. Um, but that's some of my, just my general over, overall thoughts on it. Um, how about you? Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I, I definitely f- agree with you about thinking this was just going to be like a little placeholder and then getting into it and being surprised as to everything that was going on. Um, you know, we had Roxy and uh, Jubilee and the whole rescue mission to get them. Mm-hmm. We had... Quentin and the other, the rest of the team trying to uh, rescue people. And for a minute, I was like, oh, Quentin's finally doing something. And then he hurts a teammate. I'm like, oh, come on, Quentin. Yep, come yep. on. That was definitely pushing along that plot of, uh, you know, I forget who said it to him. Uh, Kitty, I think, said it to him. Mm-hmm. You know, every time you're around, trouble follows you. Uh, and in this case, that's what the that's what seems to be the side plot that she was uh, going for. And cause, yeah, by the end of the issue, we see him kind of going off with uh, Krakoa. So I'm like, okay, I wonder. I was actually Quentin's not my my favorite character, but I gotta say by the end of this, I was actually wondering. Like, so I actually wonder where he's going. Like, is he going to go find himself, better himself? Uh, what what's gonna happen with that? So I was actually interested in that. Like I said, I was interested in every little um, side plot that was introduced to us or ongoing still. I was obviously interested um, that. We got to move along the story with uh with Ben and Nate. Yes, yep. By the end, as well as this issue. Yeah, yet again, one of those things where they uh, it, it, it took a couple pages, but in a couple pages, you moved along the story and still kept it compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, that that conversation they had, I thought, was very interesting. I learned something I did not know 
that his powers extended besides just actually touching somebody and, you know, gaining essentially their memories or their feelings. Um, we find out that he can actually feel the feel it coming off of people. So he can get a, a sense of um, your emotional uh, the aptitude just by being around you. Yeah. So that was interesting, too, because he's like, I've picked up on the fact that, you know, you've been throwing these signals, but I, I, I'm I, scared to act on them because. And it was interesting. And in, and in that conversation, it made me think of Rogan Gambit. Okay. Did you get you didn't get that feel, did you? No, I didn't. That's cool you pointed that out though. Because he his whole thing was he said like the fact that he can pick up, you know, exactly everything somebody's thinking or the way they feel by touching them has worn relationships in the past. And it's kinda like it's the same thing, except he does it where Rogue takes, you know, your energy and possibly could steal your your life force, he just takes your memories. And it's very similar. Their their touch keeps them from being close to somebody because okay, of yeah. that. I didn't even think about that. W- one because you know, rogue it'll hurt somebody. With him, it'll still hurt somebody, but in a different in a different way. Um, so that was very interesting that for them to have that conversation. And him to kind of like, yeah, I do like you, but I don't think we should even attempt a relationship because it's not going to end well. Mm-hmm, yeah, and then I we're left on a. Yeah, but then we're kind of left on a cliffhanger on whether or not they're going to say forget it and try anyway. No, that's what. But oh, two, I, I'm sorry. I, no, go ahead. I was say yet again two pages, and it said so much in two pages. We, we've got a total of four to six pages six, in the last yeah. three issues of these two characters that have done way more. Then what? Where are we at with that uh, that one book? Is it like issue nine or something? Yeah, coming up on nine, I believe. Yeah, way more in six pages <laughs> than what we've got in sixty some pages of another series. Right, exactly. Uh, Attempting all, to tell the same kind of story. Yep, yeah, and it all works. It all works. And uh, mm-hmm. I do want to touch on Eye Boy real quick because yes, did you drop or did you notice the drop of the second muta- uh, second mutation coming into play? And although, uh, and although it hasn't been explained yet, uh, as far as what's going on with the whole second uh, mutation thing, um, I, I'm I was I was it was cool to see that it was brought up at least again. Um, but I wonder what like, my my question is. I like, I'm wondering what the editor's rule is on playing around with the second uh, second mutation. Like, or are they even following it? Because we it's it's never mentioned other than Generation X and. It was briefly, briefly mentioned in uh, Blue, but not necessarily anything else. And of all titles, I would figure it'd be like in a flagship one that people are going to be paying attention to uh, more. Um, so I, I, I have questions about the second mutation. That's all. Well, it's just it's just funny because I think Blue was the main issue where they made it a point to mention secondary mutation. Oh, it was yeah. That was one of the arcs we were really dig, uh, digging on. Yeah, and they they made it a point to to bring out the word secondary mutation and emphasize the fact that there was secondary mutations going on. Um, this whole time in Gen X, we've learned about Eye Boy's secondary mutation in another issue, and it came back in this issue. Mm-hmm. And in both issues, it's not even necessarily mentioned as a secondary mutation. Right, it's just brought up because uh, um, Nature Girl, she's like, hey, he has he can do this and this and that. He can see through uh, things. So I was like. So cool, Ed. And it, I'm glad it was uh, brought up and used in a effective way. Yes, it was. And they, they even when they they like, oh, you can. How long has this been going on? He's like, uh, you know, a few weeks. Um, it, it, in that whole conversation, it's still not called a secondary mutation, though. No, nope, no, it's not. I, I didn't even think about it as one until you just said it. You just said, I'm like, yeah, I guess that would be a secondary mutation. I know, just took it that. as. No, I, I took it as him learning more about his powers. I didn't even take it as a secondary mutation. I just figured, like, okay, he's learning. He actually has these eyes because he can do this. Well, I, I got to go back, but there was, like, a quick scene when I think he was with mm-hmm. Nature Girl or he was with someone. He actually, like, saw through their clothes for the first time, and he was, like, shocked by it. I can't remember who he was talking to or who he was uh, looking at, but it was very, very brief, and, and it, I remember that scene sticking with me. Cause it's like, oh, yeah, I that what's was going on with that whole second uh, mutation part. Yeah, I think that was either the issue before or maybe after 
Oh, uh, his adventure of Nature Girl. Yes, or during it, it, it was, was, it was it early was, on. It was around there. It was around there. Yeah. But yes, he was freaking out because his um mutation. He started being able to see more and more. It start. I remember when it started. It started when he was doing the training with um was it blindfold? Yes, yes, it was. He was. And then she was pushing him with his power, and then his eyes were hurting. I remember that his eyes were burning, and then all of a sudden, he could start seeing through stuff, and he didn't want to tell nobody. So I, I remember when it happened, but we haven't heard anything about it since then. Mm -hmm, exactly. So when it came up, I was like, oh, yeah, he can, yeah. And like you said, it was used very effectively. And I love the fact that we are getting, we're actually seeing classic characters being used, and with yeah. actual dialogue. <laughs> and I appreciate you, Christina Strange. Talking about Mercury? Them. Mercury, yeah, Mercury uh, was awesome. And I think even um, there was someone else in here who even had a piece of dialogue, if I'm correct. Or maybe I'm just thinking of Mercury. Well, we saw Mercury do something. We saw Husky do something. Oh, Krakoa even had some dialogue as well. I at the beginning. Oh, yeah, and, Krakoa. Uh, but no, yeah, I just appreciate the you know, opposed to like a nine dialogue cameo, like kind of in the background. I, I like that she's actually using him. But I have a oh, question yeah. for you. What did you think of the Jubilee um, little subplot? I know you're like, not the biggest fan of the, the whole vampire thing, um, but I'm really interested to hear what you thought, because I'm not too hip into it. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts before I, I tell you mine. Not a fan of Vampire Jubilee still. Um, I'm not sure if it's mandated that Jubilee is a vampire until further notice. But I need, I need not Vampire Jubilee. However, with that being said, it was kind of interesting to see her um, in a position where she's losing blood, she needs blood to heal, and she's able to control the hunger mm -hmm. long enough to yeah. tell Roxy to, to get this person to safety, be a hero, do this, and then makes the conscious decision to try to feed off her own blood in order to, to help her. Yeah, and by, that, by that hurting was, herself as well. Yeah. yeah. That was interesting, but what was even more interesting about the thing was the fact that when Chamber gets there, because we've, we've been seeing in the last few issues that Chamber has a thing for Jubilee now. Mm -hmm. and he's got a crush on Jubilee. And he makes a decision like, well, you know, you need blood to heal, and, you know, why that may have been a good idea to try it, it's not working like it should, so feed off of me. Um, yeah, you that was pretty to interesting. So feed off of me, yeah. yeah. Still not a fan of Vampire Jubilee with that. all that said, though. But it was it was used effectively in this issue. Yeah, it was definitely well played. I thought because um, it, it was real cool because we saw when they when her and Bling were uh, on the train and when she would like check the pulse of um of the uh, the warlocks or Morlocks. I mean, um, yeah, she would check the pulse and the panel would change. Like the heartbeat would start reading and that there's like a mm -hmm. red um, red screen over the panel. So you know she, it was kind of feeding on the fact that she was hungry and she was uh, trying she was fighting it. I really like the uh, that that touch of the art to it, and then the fact that when we when they go down to find her, she's uh, stuck her hand onto a, a rhubar uh, to cause herself to not ha have hunger. So she's like, "What did she say?" It's something like uh, the pain will actually you know take away the hunger. So yeah, I mm -hmm. thought it was, I thought it was well played, definitely well played. Still not the biggest fan of the Jubilee uh, vampire bit or vampire idea, um, but I wonder if that amulet's still gonna pop up anywhere or. Because I don't think, because she it, she put it if she put it on, she was able to not be a vampire. So, yeah, I, I actually yeah. trust in Christina Strain to the fact that she has. If you notice, we're like touching on each character and kind of what they're doing, and the trend nope. is we. It's been something that we it, we that has been leading up to this. Um, so I re it's kind of like a finale to some of these plot seeds, which I really appreciate. But yeah, I wonder what's going to uh, happen with the amulet, though. I, I do too, but to what you just said, it's it's, it's um, seeds have been planted, paying off. Um, there's a lot of these things that are happening in this issue were planted early on in other issues. Um, the secondary mutation, the, even the relationship between um, Eye Boy and Nature Girl comes into play in this issue. Mm hmm. Um, which those two are hilarious together. I love them together. Yeah, same here. Um, <laughs> Possum babysitting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Quinn and his attitude problem and him wanting to be a hero but not taking the time to actually consider his action before he does anything. Um, 
everything, everything we've been seeing so far that's been sprinkled through Generation X is paying off with this issue. Like a lot of it is is been built up, and we get some um, payment here, which means that I'm expecting. Hopefully, the amulet to, like you said, come to play pretty soon. <laughs> um, there's a couple other things I'm hoping you know pay off in the next couple of issues. Yeah, same. But right. I mean, this is this is good writing here. This is good writing when mm-hmm. you establish something, Juggling issues all go the seeds. Yes, and now you're you're hearing this one issue, as you just said, you're juggling them all, and you make sure that everybody has a moment. Everybody has like literally. Everyone has a couple pages to touch this one, whatever their development is, or whatever they even the villain, even, even the villain has a couple of pages that or a couple of panels that actually move along what's going on with her. Yeah, yeah, and I necessarily didn't even by the end I never didn't even care about Monet, but I do want to segue into Bling because that's yes. also touched on as well because we saw the last issue um, she she was at therapy with um, Husk, and in this mm-hmm. issue uh, she actually has a panic attack. And yep. Jubilee actually has to, you know, they they have that conversation. I, I figured the conversation may be a little bit longer, um, just because kind of what led up to it. Um, I still didn't mind it though because it worked. So even that's um, brought up, and I can't wait to see the the transformation of Bling and you know how she continues to grow as a character. Uh, I wonder. I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm really invested in the future of Bling. I want to see how she ends up in in the, or by the end of this because she is like. The, I feel like the smartest one of them all in taking it serious uh, mm-hmm. to to grow as a, a character and a person and hopefully be on the X-Men. Maybe X-Men Red someday. Who knows? Yeah, but see, like, like what you just said, that's why, though, she's the smartest one because she's the one who wants to be a hero. She wants to be an X-Men. Yeah. The other ones, for the most part, don't really care. Yeah, they're just having fun. Um, <laughs> they're, they're just having fun. The, the idea of learning how to actually live a semi-normal life with these abilities is enough for for most of them um but for for playing she wants to be a hero she wants to be an Mm x-man and i and i i think that it was awesome to see um the growth between last issue the beginning and middle of this issue to the end because last issue she was kind of like, yeah, 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 whatever. You, you, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're kind of like me. I'm, I'm good enough to be an X Men. Then in the, in the beginning and middle of this issue, we have okay, she's having a panic attack. What do I do? How do I? I don't know what to do. How do I be an X Men if I don't know what to do? Um, and then I think Jubilee helped her when she told her to take the the survivor to safety. Yeah. That, that gave her something heroic to do, which built right. some kind of. Confidence. Oh yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point, yeah. my friend. Well, I, I, th- I think, it won't, of course, Jubilee was trying to prevent. You know, I, I don't know if I can control myself. I might try to eat you or them, so get out of here. But at the same time, I think that was. Um, I'll just say this. I don't want to say the name of it, but there is a movie that has a scene similar to that in it. And in that movie, somebody wants to be a hero. And they freeze up and have a panic attack, and they're told by another hero, "What you do is you do something heroic. You go save one person, and then see how you feel after that." And as soon as they save that one person, uh, I see you're yeah, you pick, pick up, yeah. As soon as you save that one person, you realize what it means to be a hero, or why you even want to be a hero in the first place. And that is but, why Justice League is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I wasn't going to say the name of the movie. All right. No, yes. No, no, no. Yes. But that—that's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of that in a way. Now, I'm not saying that that was consciously what Jubilee was definitely doing, but I feel like that's part of um, maybe the way it was written mm-hmm. to to do that so that we can get Roxy growing as a, a character and get her and get molded more into a hero. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I'll just say. I know you touched on it earlier already. I, I did enjoy the the uh, Nathaniel Morph uh, having an actual chance to talk for, for yes, once. That, um, that, that was definitely, definitely needed, uh, and I can't wait to see where everything goes for. I'm so invested in these characters. Like, bring it, bring it on. Even Vampire Jubilee, uh, <laughs> uh, for the time being, I, I'm invested into it, in there. Um, but yeah, again, I definitely take. Uh, I appreciate Christina Strain did take the advantage, to tie some things up, and subtly mm-hmm. um, set up other stories as well that I'm interested to follow. Um, I know, like the, like that cliffhanger at the end. Yes, yes, indeed. With uh, good old Krakoa and Quentin going away, the nature. Yeah, and saying, him being uh, sad. 
Yeah, him being sad. He's so exactly. he was so sad. He, he was hurt. He was hurt. Yeah, he had a huge tantrum at the beginning, and now he's all like, "Oh shit!" Because uh, because Morph actually told him off. Uh, so he was like, "Oh, rough." Well, he he was hurt at the end because, um, of course, Nature Girl is out there with with the possums. Yeah, and I'll he's, he's, he's for you. Don't worry. <laughs> and sees him leaving, and he's like, "You know, what do you care? You know, I'm, I'm going to try. You going to try to stop me?" And she's like, "No, why would I?" And his response. I took it as he said, "Yeah, that's what I thought," but I took it as like he wants somebody to stop him. He really like he he's got so much pride that he can't tell people that you know I want you guys to do these things. I want mm-hmm. you guys to act like a friend to me. I want you to do this, but deep down, that's what he wants. He wanted somebody to stop him. Like Quentin, don't do that. I understand you're going through a rough spot, you know, but we're all here to help each other. He wants somebody to have that conversation with him, and there's no way to have it. So Damn, he's like, well, writing. I'm just, I'm just going to leave. Some good writing. <laughs> if, you, if you listen to our earlier Gen X reviews, we are like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. now we're like, this is awesome. I love I'm <laughs> invested to see where this is going. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> exactly. There's this in here. There's this over here. And this seems yeah. like it means this, like, so much yeah. to analyze it. Yep, exactly. Uh, let's go ahead and give our scores on this because I'm – very interested to see if we are going to match up because I don't think we've ever gone higher than I believe uh, at least an eight seven I believe eight eight. That sounds about right. Yeah, and your nines have been tossed out there yet. Uh, but what are you give Gen X number nine this week? Well, I think that's going to change. I'm about to throw a nine all up in this book's direction. Me too. <laughs> um, this definitely so far this absolutely is my favorite issue of Gen X. Um, it builds on so much of the other stuff that we've seen in the series, and what's even better is it's building off of the issues that we actually already enjoyed. Everything that I can think of in here that is like a payoff from something that we previously read in Gen X comes from one of the issues that we already liked. Um, we were seeing these guys as friends now. We're seeing them in a position to find they did, they did in this issue what they should have been doing through in the Mojo crossover which was saving people <laughs> out there doing stuff. Yes. Um, that was awesome Clean, to see cleaning that. Cleaning up a mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was awesome to see that. It was great that everyone got their own time to shine. Everyone's story got developed and moved along a little bit further. Uh, even Vampire Jubilee. Even that was awesome to see. Uh, they, while doing all this, while still managing to let us know like there is a threat around, there is a villain yeah. lurk, lurking in the shadows, but this definitely took the time to focus on cl- cleaning up and further along some of those storylines. And I wonder if, because the next issue is there is their legacy issue. Right. And we have Monet here and we have, like, we have Husk here. I am wondering if that is going to be when we're going to see more of the surviving original Gen X team. I Yeah, I would guess at least maybe two or three more maybe. Well, there's only like two or three more left. Oh, that works out perfectly. I mean, I, yeah. still, I don't want it to be... I definitely hope it doesn't go the route of just kind of pushing the other characters aside. Uh, mm-hmm. If they do introduce some of the older Gen X characters, I still want our young characters, the young younger team, mm-hmm. uh, to be in the in the forefront more. I wonder if they're hinting at some stuff. Because sometimes, you know... There are hints and Easter eggs drop that you don't realize until later on. Mm-hmm. And last issue, where we talked about Krakoa, and we talked about the fact of who he was in the X Men universe. And I'm wondering if, if if they're not, maybe it's not going to be Krakoa, but maybe that's used as a hint to tell us that they're going to do something similar to what they did with the old school X Men. And what I mean, just follow me here. All right. Let, let's say that Jubilee knows that this threat is something that could hurt the kids, and they've already dealt with her and the original Gen X have already dealt with um, this threat before, right? So what if the next issue, she gets together, the old school team members are left, they go after her, and they fail. And it's up to the new kids to be the ones that go in and uh, try to rescue I like where you're going. I like where you're going. So they gotta get Quentin back, and they gotta get everybody on the same page, and they gotta try to band together and go and save the original team and in the process indirectly become the new team that'll be their time to shine and get the gold medal yeah i think i think we're just really anxious to get an issue of them actually all as a cohesive unit doing something yes and i'm 
I'm with the, uh, that payoff coming because right now we're they say say if you know say the worst thing happens and one of the characters die, we're gonna mm. be we're gonna feel for that because we are so like Christina Strange giving building so much character for us that we are becoming more attached to him. So it would make more sense instead of you know going right into it as far as like a big blockbuster and someone dying, we don't really necessarily care because. We know they're going to come back, but at least if we feel attached to them, we have that, oh, maybe this actually means they're going to be off the map for a a long, 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 long while. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I'm with you with the nine. Echo everything you say. Um, First time ever giving Gen X a nine uh, on the podcast. (laughs) It feels weird, doesn't it? It does feel weird. And just the fact that this was, even though it being a placeholder issue before Legacy Arc, it doesn't even feel like that in any sort of way, I think. Mm-mm, no, it was it was solid in its own right. That's the thing. That's what's crazy about it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that is Gen X number nine. Uh, you got anything else on this? Or actually, I do have one thing um, before we move on. If you go to the page where uh, Benjamin's carrying all the chips, and it, above it says like the Xavier Institute and the painting right there, it kind of looks like um, uh, not. It, well, it is Charles Xavier, but I'm trying to, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> oh, it does like Patrick Stewart. It is Patrick Stewart. That is, wow. Yeah. Not even subtle about it. It's Patrick Stewart. I was, I, was, I just <laughs> noticed that. I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, I hope I don't forget to mention that, but very cool. All right, well, with that being said, what are we talking about next, Danger? All new Wolverine number 27, written by Tom Taylor. Art from Juan Cabal and Nolan Woodard with letters from BC's Corey Petit. Digging is shook after being dissected by Orphan to X and nearly escaping. Now in safekeeping with his family, he smells trouble with Sarah. He doesn't hesitate to pull a bull in Sarah to prove his point either. There, it's re- uh, revealed to Laura that in fact, her believed mother is only a bot, uh, emotionally controlled by the Orphan to X. Their message is perfectly clear, and with the Mermosa sword, uh, they'll kill every Wolverine in existence. I wonder if they even know that OG Logan is on the hit list now. Wow, um, what a follow-up to the last issue. Um, I did not expect them to go ahead and drop the whole this is not your real mother in this issue. I was sure they were going to stretch it out for like at least one more issue. Uh, no, I figured Deacon would pick up on that, especially after seeing like the uh, the video camera of her house. Yeah, there's no. I, I'm glad they picked up on it because I, I was hoping they wouldn't just uh, have him forget that for an issue, so I, I'm really glad they did that. But go ahead. Well, I, I didn't think that they would have him um, forget it. I just figured that there would be so much pandemonium in this issue. True. You know, they just got in a shootout. You know, there's orphans of X everywhere. I figured this most of it would be like a frantic conversation. And then he him go, oh, by the way, I saw them, you know, watching your place. So then that be the cliffhanger or something? Yeah, that'd be the cliffhanger. But they made sure to get to that real fast in this issue yeah and made, um, made it for a very tense issue too <laughs> yeah that's what I'm, gonna say. I'm not complaining because it was still tense the whole thing was tense with the conversation was frantic um the whole fact that they were like Dakin put the gun down <laughs> put, the, put, put the gun Jonathan's down Dakin. even like whoa whoa buddy easy oh man um of course, we've we've been loving the conversations between you know Gabby and Laura, and it was fun to finally see Dakin in the mix with them. Um, this is essentially family in the room. This is, I mean, for the for all intents and purposes, depending on how you look at it, this is uh, a brother and two sisters, or a brother, a sister, and a niece. Right. Um, it kind of depends on how you want to look at Laura. I mean, Gabby. Gabby. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know Gabby is uh, technically Laura's clone, and you can look at her. I, I, I often look at Gabby as Laura's daughter. Is that weird? No, I, I, I kind of I, 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 get, I get she's more like her little sister, but their relationship and the way they talk to each other and the way that she protects her and everything just makes me think of a mother and daughter. Yeah, and just do the fact that you know Gabby never had a mother, so Laura yeah. has definitely taken that place of that to teach her the ways and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, and and in turn, she is what G- Gabby is to Laura, what Laura is to Logan. So she's essentially L- Logan's daughter because she's a clone, and she's a clone of Laura. So by default, that makes her Laura's daughter. What a family tree! <laughs> I know what a family tree. Um, but it was fun to see them all interacting together. 
it was awesome to have that one little panel that had all three of them together. Like I've been waiting to see that for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was hilarious to see Dakin flip out his whole thing. Like, listen, I have my arm cut off. These guys tortured me for like three days. I've been burnt. I've been stabbed. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been that. branded. <laughs> um, and for once, you know, he's the one making complete and utter sense because he's like, listen, they're watching the plays. They probably want you to. Wait a minute! Did you talk about the mirror monster sword? Did you say anything at all about that sword? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that whole conversation was hilarious. The way he figured out that that's not the real mother, he's like, "Well, yeah, yeah, you can hear a heartbeat, but a heartbeat never changes." Yeah, didn't skip and, her. He pulled the pulled the uh, gun at her either. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I, I had a gun point at her, and it didn't skip. And what's really funny is that Laura realizes the logic in this, mm-hmm. and, and disappointed as well in her choices. She's disappointed in her choices, and she's upset with Dakin still a little bit. But you can also tell she's upset for herself. Like, you know what, Dakin? I, I, I the the moment where he consoles her at the end, when he wa- after she beats him up and he walks over there and he's like, you know, I know you wanted to be her, and I'm sorry it wasn't her. And it had that little moment, and then she rages out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was scared. Uh, I was scared of Laura at that point. Um, man, that was old school Laura. That was X twenty three that came out exactly because like when it's after he uh, shoots her and you see her head mm. turn and her eyes are just like you see like the red stars in her eyes and I'm just like oh oh shit oh oh shit oh yeah her head snapped <laughs> to the side and just looked at him and she just went off yeah because uh, Dakin I love the fact that they have that panel of Dakin dropping the gun and saying Laura uh, Laura like trying to talk some sense into her before she goes off on him but no 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 <laughs> he, he dropped the gun and put his hand and was like listen to me Laura I know you're mad but <laughs> and then she just went berserk full berserk on him even though I thought that, um, that scene was a little dragged out and I would have seen I would like to see a little bit less of that and more of Orphans X but at the same time I, I think that you know he's Tom Taylor is keeping them hidden, um, and we at least we understand where they're coming from as well. Because I'm I'm scared shitless of the Orphans of X right now, uh, and their little weird cult and how they're you know able to trick Laura like that. Because I even wondered too. I was like, how is she not? How is she not spooked by this? Or because when Deacon breathes it up, I'm like, how does she, how does she not pick up on that right away? But it's explained that they were Orphans of X were controlling her emotions, and Deacon's even mm-hmm. like, hey, you you've been gone. I forget what he says exactly, but. In the sense of you've been gone for a while, you know their their technology, their you know, it's out of this roof. They are way way advanced, and that's how they were able to trick you, Laura. And I was like, yeah, that, yeah, that works. That makes perfect sense. Why she wasn't able to pick up on it at all right away and not smell the scent, not smell the the heartbeats. Um, yeah, that was well played. I thought. Which it, that gets a little bit deeper later on in the issue because that's the the moment that they have when he kind of you know consoles her and tells her look, don't feel bad. They used you. This is they have this technology. You know we just got to figure out how to move from here. Right. That's when we begin to kind of get an idea, um, which was crazy because I think I need my uh, my Allen is right shirt <clears throat> uh, because. From the first issue of this arc, I, I I threw out an idea for a backstory for who they were, and it pretty much was who they were, <laughs> because they said in here that they're pretty much the remnants of the battles that the X Men have had. Yeah, the casualties, the people who who survived the catastrophes and er- error that um have happened when the X Men battle people. Um, yeah, I got a sense more. It was well, it seemed. I mean, at least they're going after the Wolverines right now. So maybe, oh, yeah, they're maybe, going after the, maybe that's going their, after the first on their hit list, all the, the Wolverines, and maybe go after the other ones. But I got a sense it was more focusing on the the adamantium uh, characters. It is definitely focusing on them, and the reason why I think is because they're the more dangerous ones out of most of the mutants. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to kill a Wolverine. Like... Anybody with that bloodline is practically nearly impossible to kill. Right, them. so now why not tackle them first? And that's going to be your, yes. your biggest feat. Yep, exactly. Yes. And, 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 th- and think about it, they named themselves the Orphans of X and not the Orphans of Wolverine. Of Wolverine. <laughs> Going off after um, all of them. I do have one one issue with Orphans X and at least one of the panels. Uh, what were you going to uh, say? 
I, I was actually about to get into it because that's when we start seeing their network that they have because they Which we find that very cause, wide because they can ask like, did you say anything about the those swords? Did you say anything about the blade? And that's when we see the network and we see that they've been watching apparently uh, Captain Marvel. They've been watching Black Widow, who is dead, of course now, and they have been watching uh, Black Panther. You didn't even catch that, did you? Um, no, I didn't. Where was that one at? It, the, the 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 first page when you first start getting into the whole network where they're like, do we have Captain Marvel? And they're tracking Captain Marvel. The second panel where the the girl's oh, like, she yeah, look, yeah, see, look, 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 you see Black Widow, you see Black, Black Panther, Panther, and, and you see Captain Marvel. Yeah, and stick so on got that panel open. real quick. That's where okay. I have an issue because okay. I mean, depending on not necessarily, I don't have an issue. Uh, maybe this comes before. You know, maybe it just hasn't caught up yet. But technically, the Triskelion shouldn't be mm-hmm. in existence. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I was waiting for that. So. I was waiting for that. <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe the story is behind. I'm not exactly sure. But if it is current, uh, it's a little off. A little off right there. It shouldn't be behind, but maybe this is a new Triskelion. I mean, the Orphans of X, they have this, this, all this technology to to do what they just did. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them that they could have rebuilt that and made it to where nobody knows it's even in existence because they do track down um, Captain Marvel. And of course, they find out where the blades are buried, which was ironic to me that the blades are buried because I didn't read the arc where they did this. So I didn't know where they were. But um, they're buried on the grave of Elizabeth Hallett, which for anybody who knows or doesn't know, that's actually uh, Wolverine's mother. That's OG Wolverine's mom. Yep. Uh, so it was interesting that that's where the blades were. And, and not just the not just Dakin's blades that he had grafted to him, but also what's left of the sword. Oh, my God. I, on that same panel, I'm just not noticing this. Uh-oh. On one of the graves, it says Apollo Creed. <laughs> it does say Apollo Creed. Oh my goodness! Eighty five was that the year that that, that, that Rocky came I, out? I had to have been nineteen forty two to nineteen. That is hilarious. Apollo Creed kind of makes you want to try to figure out what the other two say, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Juan Cabal's career. Career. I can't remember who Juan Cabal. I, Faith in. I think the other one says Faith in Humanity. Faith in Humanity. Yeah, that one. Yep. Oh, that is hilarious. Uh, that, the st- stuff you notice sometimes. Oh, I love it. Love it. But, I mean, even sticking on that whole page as well, that's where we see the bomber. Um, who we're, yes. we're not sure too much of her backstory, but we know that you know the she's against the, the X-Men, uh, and particularly the Wolverines right now as well, and she mm-hmm. straps on that huge armor bomb and dives right at Captain Marvel. And yep, I'm like, suicide Whoa. bomb. Su- yeah, suicide armor bomb, and yeah, that sound effect in that panel of it, her crashing, um, and I believed it too. That whole panel transition because she like, yeah, uh, she puts the hands together to make the bomb or at least the igniter, and then mm-hmm. boom. Um, and see, that's the that's the thing that why I said I wouldn't put it past them that they could have rebuilt the Triskelion is because well they didn't that bomb they necessarily didn't have Triskelion. Um, they were just mentioning how someone had left or no. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, because um, Captain Marvel left the Triskelion. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. My fault. No, you're good. It's all but good. Still, but even nice. then, I, I I wouldn't put it past them to have something like that because that suit is able to take down Captain Marvel. And that's no easy feat because Captain Marvel is one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe. Right. And so they're able to knock her out cold. Wild, then. Yeah. No, I'm loving Sp- the Sp- X. Like I said, I think this may end up being one of my favorite arcs. Um, depending on how this all wraps up, man, this yeah, this could be... I mean, again, we, we mentioned it when we first started doing this arc. Uh, I mean, they're introducing a new villain, a new Rogue Squad, essentially, um, mm-hmm. that is powerful. And I want to see our X-Men come together to stop them. I hope they're not killed off or put in jail. I do hope they no. there's some sort of remnants um, after all this is done. But yep. I, want, I want to see them come back, like, hands down. I, I would love for because they they like you said they're they're a new rogue they're a new team a new group and they're making a very good point of making them feel dangerous they feel dangerous like they they feel like they need to be taken seriously yeah 
Um, in the first issue, it was kind of like, okay, they're going to be a group that's going to be around for two issues. They're not going to be too, too bad. And now here we are. I'm like, no, these guys are a threat. They took out Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. They're watching some of the heavy hitters in the Marvel Universe. They know about the weapon that can be used to, to essentially kill anybody, basically, in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Because the only reason it works on Wolverines is because it cuts at a cellular level, which means that their cells can't heal. So they talk about that. They tell Captain Marvel, like, don't get cut with those blades. Because if you get cut with them, you stay cut. You're done, yeah. So, yeah, they feel like a threat. They know about what could possibly be one of the most dangerous weapons in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to take Captain Marvel down. They've got the Wolverines on the ropes. They were able to capture Dakin. That's no easy feat by itself to capture Dakin. No. They're, they're able to trick and manipulate uh, Laura. They like they're, These guys are dangerous. I hope what happens is that they try to keep us under wraps, but some of the other X Men or X characters are like, look, you guys can't handle on their own or something. Yeah, you guys yeah. can't do this on your own. You should have called us in in the beginning when this first happened. Um, I do want them to get beat. I don't mind if um, some of them go to jail, but like you said, I want that teaser that there's still like a small group of them out there. It's like, yeah. okay, we're going to rebuild, and so next time we're going to do this yeah, right. Or, yeah, you can't cut up, cut, up, cut off one head and. Not have you know five pop up yeah. hide your way. <laughs> I was just about to say I, I exactly I want them to be like like a hydra where you think you got the the um the whole group, but in reality there's like another splinter cell or there's another group sitting hiding somewhere in some secret laboratory that they don't know about. Yeah, and just to touch on the orphan bomber real quick, she was also um she was also had cancer as well, yep. and so just to add to the the suicide bomb aspect of that and. Deacon wearing uh, Laura's clothes. Yes, yes, I wanted to get into that strong girl. He had strong that strong girl. girl shirt on in the end, and it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, it was so glorious. Yes, but yeah, with the uh, whole with the whole Orphan's X, it's very minimal of what we're seeing, but mm -hmm. it's just it really is layering um, the orphans to have me more you know interested in them. Especially now they have the uh, I probably mispronounced that when I did my uh, my bamf, but Miramosa the Miramosa sword they have it now. Uh, although mm -hmm. it all seems too easy, at least there's an explanation. Like it was the easy. That was smart. not easy. <laughs> <laughs> they had to take out Captain Marvel. That was not easy. And what I love is when they get the blades, um, they pick up that the, the what's left of the actual sword, mm -hmm. and um, the leader makes it makes that point. Don't hurt her. You know, I know that you're angry about everything that's been going on, she's but she's enemy. not our enemy. You know, which led me even more to think like, yeah, they're more concerned with basically with, with mutants primarily yeah, the Wolverines. So the, the, those are their more we need yeah. we need this mutant uh villain. And it's the perfect freaking villain. I'm so glad that Marvel gave him the chance to establish this Orphans at X. <laughs> like talk about originality. Here we here we are. I mean, I, I go back on what I said earlier, I would add uh, all new Wolverine in there right now. But yeah, she was even before Resurrection. Tom Taylor's been killing it um, prior to this, so you know what I mean. So, you know, but a, a new group that that hates mutants but is actually a threat is something new. And so far, they're not necessarily using. They're not using robots. They're not using you know genetically modified um, soldiers. These are all for all intents and purposes for what we've been seeing. They're all strictly 100% human. And yet and still, they're able to outsmart Laura, who for all intents and purposes, should be able to smell literally that something's wrong. A mile away, yeah. A mile away. Should be able to hear that something's wrong. But yet and still, they're able to get her. They, they got Dakin at first. The first issue when they first attacked Dakin, at first, Dakin was slightly thrown off by... When they did the whole bar thing where they was like, oh, you're Dakin. We saw you at the island helping all the people. Um, so uh, these dudes are definitely a threat. And I yeah. love the fact that they are human. I love that this is a human threat. Right. Very true. Very true. Yeah, man. The art, art game is killing it as well uh, with Nolan Woodard. And um, uh, what was the other colors' name? There was like at least two colors on this, I believe. But I think one of my favorite uh, panels was when Dakin... Let me see if I can find it real quick. That's when Dakin's trying to explain everything that's going on. He has the Uzi. Um, 
going on. <laughs> and in the background, it's kind of like the, the red swirl behind him to kind of like intensify mm. that scene. Um, I really appreciated that as well. Um, but I stopped on that before I tried to find the other colorist's name. Because I want to give them all credit. Uh, yeah, Wonka Ball. That's who, yeah, artist. That's why it sounds so familiar. Wonka Ball was on the grave as well. And Nolan Woodard. Um, yeah, some of the best art right now in these X books. And yeah, man, I am. I'm about this series right now. I, I mean, I've been about it, but this is probably I think my favorite arc uh, to date, as of right now. As of right now, I, I'm with you, and it has one of my uh, favorite Gabby lines to date so far. Yeah, some of the Gabby stuff didn't really work for me this issue. Like it didn't she, not she, work for me. But she was, wasn't as snarky this issue as she normally is. Yeah, that could have been the case. And plus, I think with all like the other series stuff going on, it really, it really outweighed any funny stuff at this point. <laughs> like I can't, I can't take a joke when the orphans are extra around. We got to be serious. We got to, you know, put the put them in the coffin. No time for jokes. Yeah. But pretty much, like, for, for me with Gabby, um, early on when Dakin first got in the house, and she's like, oh, Dakin, we found your arm. And then he's all intense, and she's like, well, why don't you calm down, have a cup of coffee? He's like, coffee? Yes. I don't want any more coffee. He's like, well, how about some tea, then? It, it was there. It, it was okay. It was there. It wasn't our normal Gabby, but I, 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 I just love the how about some tea instead, then. Yeah, I'm just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just paging through it, and yeah, like the whole blam, blam, blam when he actually shot her, that page oh, was awesome. Yeah. There's so many good panels in here, pages. Like, it's just off the charts, man. The the the, the broken up panel when um he first asked Laura, like, did you tell her about the blade? Yes, yes. And really she's like, one. listen, we're, we're taking care of it. Like, how they broke it. Like, it's technically three panels, but they broke it up and made it one. I love how that is. Yeah, there's so much of that in here, too. It's It's nuts. Even some of the, the some of the way the the facial expressions are drawn in certain panels, um, I, I love the the expressions drawn whenever Lore and uh, Dakin are actually having like a sibling conversation. Like the, the way that their faces look in that panel, and also the one when she finally does calm down. Like I love the way that they drew those those facial expressions were on point for me. Yeah, I got so spooked when we saw the Orphans of X in the Xavier type helmet. Yes, we, we didn't had, like, touch on that. Hell, we did touch on that. <laughs> and she's like t- talking to Laura through there, and with all the other mm-hmm. orphans around her, I was like, I, "That's what made me really scared of the orphans." X. And when I turned to that page and saw um, them having that conversation with Laura uh, through her robot mother or emotionless mother, I was and that's just a- like, "Wow." That's also the part that made me think about when we first started this. Because in this section is when she says, like, you and you're kind of always taking away friends, family, husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, and children Mm -hmm. and left us behind. That's when I was like, oh, they're definitely after the mutants. Uh, Obviously, right now, the Wolverines, you know, but definitely after the mutants. Unless, Unless it is specifically the Wolverines they want. Because I'm thinking about, like, the one issue where, remember when, um, when you first started All New Wolverine and Lore massacred that whole town because of the trigger oh, set. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. And we, we know Wolverine's been around for a while and he has massacred and slaughtered, you know, hundreds. Like, there could be a chance that it is strictly the Wolverines because they are the ones that, that have <laughs> killed um, thousands yeah. and thousands <laughs> upon and thousands. What, and that's what makes it that they would be after, at least right now, after the, uh, the Wolverines. Uh, but I do want to read the the one piece of dialogue that's in that scene with uh, Xavier Orphan, <laughs> oh, um, she's like uh, hundreds of us. You had you uh, we've had to watch revolted while the world ignores your crimes. Uh, we will work together to see you and your kind never hurt anyone again, and we will end you. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, damn, <laughs> Lord, this you is what we've been needing. <laughs> this is what we've been needing. <laughs> Oh man, I, I've never geeked out so much over a scene uh, an all new Wolverine like this. I was just uh, so good. It's so well, good. Well, it's it's, it's kind of like you said. We've been waiting for an actual um, new threat slash villain in the in yes. the in the, yep. the X 
part of the universe. In the X verse, we've been waiting for this, and these are characters. This is a group being introduced. Fuck, call it in, the Nazi Kalagos. Yeah, <laughs> no this is being inter- <laughs> this is being introduced in Wolver in a Wolverine book. These this group Orphans of X are a big enough threat to where normally I would have thought a group like this would have been introduced in the the flagship X title. Mm-hmm. So right now I would have thought they would have introduced this in like gold. You know, back in the day, this would have been like uncanny that these these guys would have popped up in, right? Because their 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 scope of what they want to do seems massive. Their ability, like I said, they I still can't get over over the fact that they took out Captain Marvel. Like that blows my mind. They took out Captain Marvel. Um, but for them to be able to do that, to be this coordinated, to be this much of a threat, they 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 had Laura, Gabby, in a community surrounded basically and they had no idea they were surrounded right none the and whole are, community too. Yeah. like they get in that car they're like we got it they can like we gotta get out of the country <laughs> yeah he was, forget leaving the neighborhood <laughs> where is the goodest to the closest plane you know we need to get out of this out of this country i was just like uh yeah i would i would i feel you dakin so you have to be dissected tortured you're like yeah i've yeah. seen what they can do i'm out like y'all can stick around <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Which and, and that makes sense because Dakin, other than um, OG Wolverine, Dakin is the only person with their abilities. The only person in the uh, let's just call it the the the, the Logan family um, that has he's lost his healing factor before. You know that's what killed his dad was the the, the loss of healing factor. Dakin, remember when we first talked about Dakin? I told you like, uh, well, they used to have a character Dakin. I'm pretty sure he's probably dead now because he lost he lost his healing factor, hmm. and I still to this day don't know how it came back, when it came back. I was still surprised every time I see him in these last few issues. So it it makes sense for him to be that shooken up. I think he would have been slightly shooken up about the whole incident if she hadn't have told them about the blades <laughs> but I think the fact she told them about the blades right. and they know that they have the blades now he's like look I've been here before I barely made it out with my life um, they can actually kill us now we need to leave yeah, my, we need to warn and, appara- others. and apparently his healing factor isn't all the way together because his arm still hasn't even remotely listen. grown back right so yeah, he's probably super shook up. Yeah, because at one point uh, when they're running to the car, he's like, "We need to warn the others." So I'm wondering uh, who the others could be. Well, hopefully, it's the X Men. Hopefully, we get a badass team up. Maybe that's where they're going next. To I hate to say this, and I don't want to do this, and they're probably not going to do this. But when he says we should warn the others, what if he's talking about the others with healing factors like them? I wanted to be the X Men. I so wanted to be. We need to warn the X Men, but they know they're coming after them. Right. They know what that blade is primarily used for and what it was forged for. So, what the if only thing other I can think of would be Old Man Logan and Saber Two? Well, I Saber would think two. Old Man Logan and, and and Jimmy. But you gotta remember, we have Jimmy, Old Man Logan. We have Saber Two. We have um, Death Strike. Death Strike. Right, there's still another handful of mutants out there with their abilities. Oh, I, I'm hoping towards the X Men route. <laughs> I am too. I'm so hoping for it, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, we will uh, see. No. We will see. We, I think we, we shall see. I think we covered just about everything. Uh, I think we did cover How everything. Awesome this issue was. Um, that being said, what is going to be your score? Because I think mine just went up after talking about it with you. Man, I think mine's might have too. Mine's was already high before. <laughs> um, I think I think it just went up now that I even said that. Uh, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with nine point five. I can't believe I gave it that extra five. I was going to go with a straight nine. But when I think about Orphans of X, yeah, yep. <laughs> I think about... <laughs> All you gotta I think say about, is Orphans of X and just keep going yeah, up. I think about what they just did in this issue. Like, they took out Captain Marvel. They have the Blades. 
They've got the Wolverine. Some of they have at least two of the most dangerous characters in the Marvel universe on the run. They managed to trick Laura and keep her and Gabby in this community, not knowing that they were surrounded. The speech about who they are, what they're going to do, and what their kind have done to them, as far as you know, leaving mothers and sisters and everything like that. Just everything about it, like everything about this issue, is like finally. This is something I've been waiting for out of any X title is a legitimate threat to mutant kind or even to uh, the, even the Wolverines in general. Like that's, this, yeah, nine and 9.5. Right. All right. All right. Um, I was going, where was I going? I was going 8.5 after talking about it. I'm mm-hmm. going to go, I'm going to reserve my 9.5 until to see how this wraps up or as we get closer, but I am going to give it a 9.3. Okay, that's that's definitely highly respectable. Because <laughs> uh, I, I still thought this was a great issue. I actually just paged back to when they were running the car to see if Jonathan was with them. Yeah, Gabby was holding him. Yeah, she was holding three. him. <laughs> <laughs> Paying attention to detail. I love it. And the, the panel work, the artwork. Oh, my God. Uh, this is... We're gushing over this book because it is deserved. If you are not reading this book and you're listening to us for the first time, go pick this up. Go support this book. Tom Taylor's going to be writing X-Men Red. Um, I think he's one of the best writers over at Marvel right now, hands down. He is. Just the fact that they gave him the opportunity to introduce this new villain squad, the way he's handling it so far, mwah, 9.3. Still a quick read, but plenty of content there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our last book of this episode. And what is that danger? X-Men Gold number 16. Written by Mark Guggenheim. Art from Lan Medina, Jay Lyston, and Craig Young with letters from BC's Corey Petit. Kaligoth has been sleeping under a bush near the school and no one has noticed. His army opens a portal, entering Earth to come take away Kaligoth. The X-Men scatter to take the offense, leading uh, Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler stuck inside the ship after it departs Earth. There you have it. That's how we'll enter the negative zone. Well, I mean, what 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 can I say? That's how we're going to get to the negative zone. Um, some of them accidentally become stowaways on the uh, Space Hitler spaceship, and they're going to the negative zone now. No um, mention of Space Hitler anything or Nazi in here at all. No, no, no. They made it, they made it, they made it a point to dial that all the yeah, way back. All the way back. All the I way wonder, back. I maybe, even, maybe this issue was written before, you know, that and printed at the plan, at the plan already. But if it wasn't, they were probably like, "Yeah, people didn't like that." Uh, don't even mention it, please. Yeah, don't mention it. We're gonna we're gonna dial that. Let's see how far they dialed it back with the next issue. That'll tell us a right. lot. Exactly. Uh, um. Wow. Uh. Th- there were a couple of things in here that I I did kind of like. Um. Obviously, you know, more or less, old Kitty and Peter are back together. Yep, that's finally solidified. Uh, yeah, that that made for a funny moment when uh, Rachel was trying to contact him. She's like, "Oh yeah, you want me to send Nightcrawler?" She's like, "Uh, no need. Uh, he's here." And yeah, she's like, "We're going to talk about that later." Yeah, and I do appreciate him kind of throwing that adult uh, sort of X Men drama in here. Uh, that has been you know one of our complaints as far as it, not much drama from an X Men book for me personally, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was that was pretty good. So was the. Uh, the old man Logan, when he was uh, smiling, and we find out he's smiling because there's actually people coming to um, fight for mutants for once. Um, there's, there's actually, instead of having a group of protesters outside the mansion saying, you know, mutants need to be destroyed or, you know, filthy muties, there's people outside saying unity and um, no mutant deportations and saying that the X-Men are human. That was actually pretty good. That actually made me smile, too, because that's something that we don't always see and an X book because it's always easier to just have the opposition to the X Men who hate them just for being alive. So that was pretty good. Um, yeah, that was honestly like my two high points of the book. I, I'm not sure if I really like because even with the, them being stuck on the ship, it still doesn't necessarily tell us how they're going to get to the negative zone because didn't the portal close? Like, wasn't that part of the drama is the fact that the portal closed and they're still on the ship? Yep, 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 yep. Um, I mean, we'll see We'll see how they how they get there. Um, I, I thought this was a, a decent issue. 
I'm not a fan of the reasoning on how our characters are going to get into space. Just the mm-hmm. it just felt too simple, just for Nightcrawler and uh, Kitty to be, you know, to teleport in there and get trapped. It, uh, it not a fan of that. Whatever. Nope. We're, we're gonna get the characters in space. I want to see some X Men in space. So bring yeah. that on. Maybe, maybe you can knock it out of the park from moving forward. Uh, but I was not a fan of this issue for the most part. Um, and the the whole thing is really they could have let Kalagoff go, and they would have never had to deal with him again. Oh, you! you I'm not the only person <laughs> who thought that. Once they got to the point where they were like, oh, they're not attacking, they're just sailing, they're trying to, to get somebody's attention. I'm like, yeah, so that kind of should tell them that they're not attacking the Earth, they're not killing anybody. Why attack they're them? Trying to, why attack them? They went full on attack mode. And I um, guess we have Alpha Force or Alpha Flight to blame for that. I, I'm guessing so. Um, speaking of which, it was good to see armor in this issue also. Um, but uh, yeah, there was honestly no real true reason. For them to just straight up start attacking like that, mm-hmm. and I don't know, I'm trying to figure out why Kitty and Nightcrawler would go off without somebody else in the team and get trapped. And on top of that, I'm trying to wonder how you okay? They got they got cornered right on the ship as the ship's flying through the portal, yep. right? You have one person who could phase through objects and another person who could teleport. Alan, Alan, what? Oh, Kitty could have just backed up <laughs> and touched Nightcrawler and, and phased through the ship. <laughs> or Nightcrawler could have just teleported them back to the outside of the ship. I, I know. I'm, I'm overanalyzing it too much, way too much. I'm making too much sense, right? I had a feeling this would happen. My score is dropping as we talk about this. Um,. Yeah, and I mean, another issue I have with it as well, it doesn't feel like a natural continuation from Mojo. Nope. Um, it almost seemed like they forgot about Call of Golf. Like, I would think that this issue, or this arc, would have benefited from that whole Call of Golf one-shot thing. That could have just been, like, he could have used that to give us just some character development, have the characters hanging out, and then bring in the, the space Nazi Hitler dude and that whole bit. Um, Honestly, they could have flipped. They could have done. And where was, I, where was Call of Duty during Mojo? Verse. What, what, exactly. Where besides sleeping under a bush. Exactly. They. Waiting? They. What that, they. That's his whole thing. Is the wait. <laughs> I, I don't know what other story they could have put in the place of that first Call of Duty issue, but they should have put something else there. That issue should have followed the mojo, and then this should have been the next issue. And that would have made a little bit more sense. It, it wouldn't have felt like they forgot about mojo. Um, because that that Kalgoff issue was just strictly him talking about who he was right. and all of that. So that would have been cool to be an in-between to, go, to get us to the, the negative zone. But no, we got this instead. Yeah, and I, I will say, uh, I do have a positive. It's actually a really, really good positive. Um, I think one of the best scenes Guggenheim has written um, to this date on gold is when Kitty pulls aside Lydia and talks to her oh, pretty much yeah. about how, um, you know, she's questioning her, like, what happened to you in the past to make you so, you know, mean-spirited, broken as a person? Uh, I thought that was some of the best written dialogue that Guggenheim has done in gold at, to this to this date. And she's like, well, what, really what's, what's broken me. about you? What in you is broken? Yeah, that was that was a great scene and great dialogue. I would definitely agree with that. But I think that's, I mean, seeing armor was cool uh, in the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she's going to have something to do with maybe getting them into space because she has, she said something really odd at the end um, where she... Logan was asking her about where is uh, Kitty and uh, Nightcrawler. And uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, There he goes. Uh, So it says, no bio signs. We think, pauses, I think they're still on the ship. So maybe she has some sort of access. Maybe that's the seed planted to get us into space. But yeah, even then you're right. Like the portal closing, that's the whole 
drama behind it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, know more some, than, I mean, some people did like this issue this week. Uh, I was I I thought you even might might like it more than me, but it seems like we are on the same page. I do like the art. The art was uh, pretty awesome. Same, I, I do too. It was just those. It was uh, those minor. Th- I don't like killing off. First of all, that's that's yeah, that's same, one yeah. thing that's going Sleeping forward. Under a bush. Yep. Um, and I think that's because of the way they set him up. I think they set him up different. I might like this. Same. Um, or also, there's there's a couple of small things that I had issues with, and I, I told you what those were. I, I think that if you want to use two characters in order to get trapped or captured, so that they would have to go off to um, the uh, negative zone to five though i do not think whatsoever that kitty or nightcrawler were the two characters to use you have two characters those are two characters that can easily the most easy is get out of that situation like they would be out of anybody you could have pulled off the team they're the ones that could in a heartbeat and a snap and a blink of an eye get out of that situation like i said kitty could just teleport could just um phase through the ship nightcrawler could just teleport I, I don't see how they got captured. Now, had it been like Colossus or somebody or Storm, I can maybe understand. Like, okay, exactly. I can see how they got captured. And shout out but to uh, Storm. She had to have finally get some dialogue. Yeah, Storm. Yeah. Um, I I like the fact that she actually replied to um, Kitty Pride when she, uh, Kitty Pride asked for like the what was the the status update, and Storm was the one to deliver it. I, I really did um, appreciate that a lot. Yeah, um, but. There are a couple things to like about this issue for me, but overall, it it just doesn't make sense on it makes sense on how they got there, but it was I I think it was just poorly done. Yeah. But cheap way to get into space, but I'll take it for now. Maybe we can get past this. I want, I do want to see if uh if the whole Nazi thing is brought back up or if that's kind of. Squashed away. <laughs> That's dead and gone. Uh, but unless you have really anything else for this, I am. I don't have anything. All right. No, um, I don't. I don't either. All right. Well, that being said, what is going to be your score for X Men Gold number sixteen? Oh boy, my score is going to be. I give it a seven and a half. I had some issues with. <laughs> Yes, I had issues primarily with who got captured, but overall, it was slightly entertaining. I love the the dialogue at the beginning, the the whole um, why why are you doing this? Are you broken? I love that whole conversation they had. I enjoy the fact that um, we finally had confirmation, basically, that Peter and Kitty are back together. Mm-hmm. I love the the uh, comedy of Rachel. Trying yeah, to, uh, was, I got, I got, yeah, I did get some laughs out of that. I got some laughs out of that, yeah. especially because Rachel is just so robotic, and she's just like, "Oh, where are you at? I can send, I can send Kurt to get you right now." <laughs> no and need. she's like, "Uh, no, no need. Do you know where Peter's at? Yeah, he's with me. Uh, oh, oh, you we're dog. gonna, <laughs> you dog. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> we're gonna have a conversation." Um, so the, I did enjoy that. that. That opening scene, though, with Logan uh, welcoming <laughs> on the the people, the protesters, uh, with them, that was kind of cool to that, see. That too, that was cool to see too. And you do see, Especially like, because in the background, Storm, Rachel, and uh, Nightcrawler, kind of all in the background holding each other. That was good. Well, it was really good to see that scene because we. This is the first time that I can think of that I've seen Old Man Logan smile. Right. Very true. Very true. We don't get we, we don't get to see him we don't get to see him smiling. We always see him like you know frowning and, and mad about everything, and he's got like a legitimate smile like he never thought he would ever in his life see anything like that. Yeah, because it, it is actually good to see humans on the mutant side for once in a while. Exactly. Yeah, they're always made to seem that it's just them, and there's absolutely no humans that can sympathize with them or feel the same way that they, that they do. Yeah, this was just a rocky start. That's all. It really is yeah. a, a rocky yeah, that's start. Yeah, um, Maybe we can, we'll enjoy the, because this, this is going to be, I believe, like five or six issues. Uh, he did mention on our last episode, we were saying how th- this plans to be like the longest arc that he's done. Um, so he has time. So let's let's see what he can do with it, though. I hope, I hope he nails it out of the water. As, as do I. But what's oh yeah? So you gave your score seven point five. I'm going uh, seven. I, I think okay, it's, uh, so we're 
we're in the same ballpark. We are. We are. Um, it was a. It was a. Again, it was a decent issue. Um, he got us. He's well. He's getting us into space. While I did not like the way that some things were written, the fact that you even said, "Well, you know, what? I, I got to go six just because of the fact that you did point out um, the whole Nightcrawler and Kitty thing, how they they really could have got out of that situation easy. Even if they would have, like you said, switched out another character or two, it would have made sense. But you use the two teleporters, not teleporter, well, one teleporter, one person that could face you things. Nah, come on. I don't know. I just thought, I was hoping for a cooler way for us to get into space, and I... And it kind of sucks because I forgot that it, we were dealing with Kalagoth when I started reading this. I was like, oh, oh, it's him. Fuck. Guy sleeping under you, the bush. You, you and me both. So I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> he's, he, he's back. Yeah. And they could have let him go. It's a thing, too. Uh, 6.5 for me, man. I, I got to stick with that. Okay. But with that being said... <laughs> That is our books. Uh, we are going to take a quick break, though. Uh, then when we come back, we're going to do our fastball tweets and close out the show. fastball tweets and close out the show as well and if you want to get involved with the fastball tweets you can do so as well um, we have a pen post every new comic book day uh, is at our twitter at comics corner pod uh, the thread will be there just leave your thoughts and you know, try to uh, if you can get them in by saturday night sunday morning perfect uh, but if you aren't on twitter and you want us to read your thoughts about what you thought of the x-men books that were released that week if you're reading any of them uh, email us at columbus comics corner at gmail.com Let's go ahead and get into our first one. That's from Steve Sellers at Shadewing. X-Men Gold, I see what, I see why people like this issue. Google, Guggenheim looks to be getting uh, to the story he really wants to tell, and it shows. The art is rock solid. Aside from the continuity quibble um, I have about Cannonball, Cable continues to get really interesting. I like the, team's, uh, I like the team Cable's gathering, and there's a good action-packed mystery here. Uh, Malin's style works nicely for the title as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I mean, gold is what gold is. It's tears tottering on whether or not this could possibly go anywhere. Um, I mean, we, we just discussed our feelings about that. Uh, cable, however, we I'm enjoying Cable. Um, yeah. It's definitely awesome seeing the team dynamic going on here. It's good to see Cable in the leadership position. And it's reminding me why people liked Cable in the 90s. Right. And now that I think about it, um, Cable led more teams in the 90s. Like, there were... Yeah, it was a solo cable series, but most people when they say like cable, they're thinking of cable they leading a team. Think of, yeah, cable and X Force or cable and X Force team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ought to um, message Steve about the the continuity um, regarding Cannonball because, like we were saying earlier, like we're not too familiar with the externals, uh, so we're not exactly sure where Cannonball kind of fits into all this. Um, but yeah, as far as gold go, goes, I can see why people do like this issue. It's it's for the most part it is straightforward, um, mm-hmm. and he's. I can see where he's trying to get us to. Um, I just hope it, it gets better um, after this issue, personally. Uh, as far as Cable, yeah, we're, we're both definitely enjoying that as well. Um, I do like Malin's art as well. Like I said, I just have a... It, the digital pencils kind of throw me off. Um, but other than that, still a solid title. And I can't wait to see where that all goes, though. Um, but yeah, you got anything else on that? Uh, no. Cool, cool. Thank you for that, as always, Steve. Um, our next one is from Justzilla at Sean Chandre 2000. Great character moments in Gen X. Ed Brisson made a uh, made Cable great, and Dakin may be a jerk sometimes, but he was right. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I think we all agree with everything that you just said as well, Sean. Um, great character moments in Gen X. It really all wrapped up, uh, all wrapped around, I should say, uh, in this last issue, leading us into the legacy arc. Which is kind of weird to say this is a legacy arc because it is continuing what was introduced two issues or what would be two issues go two issues ago when uh, Gen X eighty five I believe is the numbering uh, comes out. Woo, man! I think it is. I think it would be eighty five. Yeah, it's somewhere around there, if I remember correctly. 
Uh, but yeah, Dinkin may be a jerk, but uh, he was he definitely wasn't a jerk. He was trying to get the point across and talk some sense into Laura for sure. <laughs> uh, but what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, Dinkin definitely can be a jerk. Um, I've said it before. Uh, for the last couple of issues we've seen him in of all new Wolverine, we've I've seen a softer side of Dakin. Um, so you know he, he can be a little bit douchey at times, but he was right here, and Laura should have listened to him. <laughs> he was right on the money, right on the money. Uh, unfortunately, he did get an ass whooping um, <laughs> to say that too prior or before you know he was able to talk some sense into her. That too, but he took it. He knew it was coming. He yeah. he he didn't really fight back too much. That's he was why he like, you know the what? Gun. He was just like, all right, let's get this over with. <laughs> let's get it over. Let's get it out, out of your system. Um, and when it comes to Gen X, yes, I mean, what more can be said? This is the, definitely the ultimate issue of Gen X so far. Um, story development, character development. Uh, it is weird, as you said, considering that the next issue is going to be a, this legacy. Um, but it's not so weird because I'm I'm seeing where they're going to bring back you know remnants of the original team, which is right. going to earn it that le- legacy. That's what's going to earn its legacy is by having some of the original team around. That's um, I was just thinking, imagine if Orphans X like break down the the sword into like some sort of liquid form, uh, <laughs> double it up, create it, and then make darts of some shit. Like they can, I mean, their their technology is you know out the wall zoo already. So I can only imagine what they, because they probably won't just go chopping people up with the sword. Uh, they're probably going they're, to probably they're going to make a, something. They're, they're going to make a suit, okay? Uh, they're going to make some kind of suit that's going to have like the. Does anybody remember the Kitty Pride had the Wolverine gloves at one point? She had some gloves, like or Jane did it. So the one issue when she learned a psychic weapon, she made the little gloves with the claws. Uh, yeah, on. yep. They're gonna make their own little Wolverine claws, and they're gonna have some kind of suit that's gonna have that what's left of the sword on it, and they're gonna give it to like their top warrior, and that's they're gonna send them out probably to fight whoever. So that's what I think is gonna happen with the blades and with Dakin's claws. Send the assassin out. Yes, they're gonna give their top assassin. Oh, that's right, because they do have his claws. You're right. You're yes, right. they have his claws. They're gonna, gonna play. Yes, they're gonna make it into a suit. With some kind of suit. There we go. There we go. Thank you for that, as always, Sean. Um, our next one is from, I'm going to try not, not to pronounce, mispronounce this, um, Jose Garcia Yiza at uh, Osu Boy. He says, uh, yeah, I read Cable 151, and I'm worried how this will affect the present. Uh, I don't want to spoil, so I, um, I'll just say I liked it. Uh, love the team that is being assembled. Um, yeah, I think everyone's really enjoying the team that is being assembled right now. Um, and that's where, again, the whole the continuity thing comes into play, how this is going to affect the past and the future as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of questions to see if kind of what he does with it. And, I, and if you are listening, you do have um, you know more insight into some of the continuity as far as the externals goes. You know, feel free to tweet at us or email us. Um, that way, we're a little more informed as well. Or we should just do our research and read it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd like to do the easy part for us, go ahead and email us um, or tweet tweet at us. But yeah, what are your thoughts on this? I definitely agree with the team. Love the team being assembled. I'm glad we had this issue where we got way more of the team being assembled. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about how it's going to affect the continuity just because Cable in himself right. is technically from the future. So anytime we've ever seen Cable in the past interacting with anybody, he's time traveling and it gets messy. So they kind of lay off of allowing stuff Cable does to really affect the um the timeline too too forward. much yeah and he even yeah. I like the fact that in this um, in the cable issue he Ed Brisson does um touch on the fact that because Armor is trying to get like some information out mm-hmm. of him he's yep. like no I I can't tell you that because that will actually that could mess up uh, your potential future and I don't want to do that for you well uh, th- this is the crazy thing about cable is cable is a paradox cable right. technically shouldn't exist because cable only exists because of cable yeah. <laughs> Like honestly, he only exists because of himself. He only has that tech, the the, the virus on his arm and his eye. Mm-hmm. He only has that because of himself. He did all that to himself. So he's a paradox there in of itself. So he, I mean, it's weird. Yeah, so you little, have to just accept that. Character. <laughs> yes, you have to accept it. Um, for sure. You got anything else on that one? No, uh, no. Uh, and think, I uh, first time I believe, um, Jose Garcia uh, Yiza uh, sending in. So thanks for that. 
Yeah, uh, thanks. And then our next one is Dan Petrosky at uh, Petrosky42. Uh, even though it's a Space Hitler arc, I appreciate the slow play Guggenheim <laughs> is putting on some plot points. Uh, we get incremental, incremental movement of Kitty and Peter and Nance's mutant deportation act this week. Um, let's hope that these uh, these salt we get solid payoffs, and the next few arcs are huge for Gold's success. Um, yeah, uh, everything you're saying, Dan, I'm right there with you. Um, and I wonder if you by a few arcs, I wonder if he is just referring to the next few issues of this arc itself, because it is going to be like five or six issues total, or just in general everything moving forward. And I want I want Gold to you know skyrocket. I want Guggenheim to be writing some of the best stuff. Um, out there, but we'll see how it goes. Though um, we are still dealing with Space Hitler. We, yep, yep. That I, 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 I'm just curious if this is a long time listener of the show because he pulled the Space Hitler out. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to say that we did, but I am going to say that we did. We pretty much patented calling Kilogram Kilogram Space, Kilogra- <laughs> Space Hitler. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I definitely do agree, though. We are getting, you know, some movement with some of the other elements that have been introduced so far throughout the series. Um, and it was, I've, I've said it during the review, it was great to see um, Kitty and Peter back together, basically. I mm-hmm. mean, wh- whether they're going to officially say they're together or not, K- Peter could've and Kitty are together in lives now. <laughs> could have been. Could have been. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we get some, some movement going forward with some of the other elements that have been introduced uh, Space Hitler, wow. <laughs> well, like I said, I wonder if he has squashed that and never wants to bring that up again or if that's going to come into play. It's going to come into play, but I'm pretty sure they're going to downplay it, like super downplay it. Because when I look back through the issue, they made them look a little bit more like um, uh, some of the characters that worked for the, the Empire in Star Wars. That's that's really funny. Uh, I was wondering they, why, why it looks so... I was like, why is... What does this remind yeah. me of? <laughs> yeah, the, the the only thing there was one panel, however, where they kept the armband on. One panel where one of the dudes has the little the little Nazi armband on with the little affinity symbol thing that they had for their their little group. But other than that, they completely changed the uniforms to look like the Empire. Yeah, they even which, tried to make Kalagoff somewhat of a, a likable character when we when they introduced his relationship with the uh, general. Yeah. So it's instead of going the Nazi route, they're like, oh, well, he does have a lover. He's he has a heart. <laughs> yeah, he's got a heart. Look, he's got a heart. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I think they're gonna downplay. I think that's gonna be it moving forward. Is we can't use actual like Nazi imagery, so we use uh, Star Wars imagery, which is, is still like insinuating Nazis. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And thanks for that, Dan. Uh, we always appreciate that. Um, and then our last one is from Daily X Men Facts at Daily X Men Facts. Gold is definitely uh, nope. step. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. We're not doing this one. Nah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Gold. Well, I have to read it. Uh, Gold is definitely a step in the right direction for me. Looking forward to this arc! Exclamation point. It feels like a fresh start of sorts, uh, but it is incorporating <laughs> everything uh, leading up to it as well. Some of these early seeds are paying off! Exclamation mark! All new Wolverine is a whole other level of great, awesome read, amazing art. Uh, Gen X and Cable were standouts for me. Both are very unique uh, with what they brought this week and are rapidly becoming two of my favorite titles. And I'm so glad to hear that Cable is becoming someone's uh, favorite title. And I'm glad mm-hmm. you're re- you are now reading uh, All New Wolverine as well. Uh, yes, Anthony. about time. Yes, about time, buddy. Bravo. Um, where was I? Highlights, wondering what's up with Quentin. Yeah, same here. The new mm-hmm. mutants uh, are assembling, yeah, new mutants, excuse me, the newer mutants assembling, assembling, God, uh, exciting, and the ex- externals, God damn it, phone, are, are fun to explore. Uh, the Orphans X may be the best villains in a while. Yes, yes, in a while, a long, long time, I think. Uh, double armor this week, too. All around great week for X-Books. And while I grab a drink of water, what are your thoughts, Alan? First of all, I want to say it's hilarious that you need to get a drink of water after that. Um, secondly, I want to say it's hilarious that you read the exclamation point. Uh, I, I think that those uh, punctuations are there to tell you how you're supposed to read the sentence. <laughs> um, thirdly, 
Yes, I'm going to agree with every single thing that was said there. I'm so glad that you're finally reading on it with Rain. Um, we've been championing that book for a while, and this is a great spot to come on. Um, yeah. The Orphans of X, like you said, I will agree with you, Ryan, and with with uh, with Anthony that not only are they the a great villain that we've seen in a while, they are probably the best villain or the best villain group right now in the X books. In the X books, yeah, maybe even the Marvel Universe. Honestly, I can't really think Quite. of anyone else right now. Quite possibly, there no no one's doing it because they have a touch of like the old school type of villainous groups. But the, the fact that they're doing stuff on the level they're doing is bravo. Um, at the same time, it's, it's good to see that Cable's picking up steam now. This I, I will champion Cable after one hundred and fifty. Nothing before that. Nothing. The five issues what, before what, that I would not issues? champion. <laughs> yeah, what five issues? They just pick Cable back up at one hundred and fifty. Um, Definitely will champion that. Of Gen X, yet again, another book that we've been championing, especially us. Uh, I'm going to assume without going back that issue five was when we, it picked up steam and we were like, okay, it, it might be heading somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I was worried when we when we said that it, it, it may have found its footing. We kept saying that, like, oh, we think the book finally found its footing. I'm so glad that it was right. Yeah, I'm yeah. so glad that it that it kept, it, that it kept it, going it, up from there. Yes, as soon it. as we said that, every issue has been better and better and better and better. And this issue, not this this past one, bravo! This is like, ah, oh, yeah. I'm a happy man now. And you know, it's funny we didn't even touch on the art in Gen X. I don't think. Nope. We had no, really no issues with. It. I mean, uh, again, some of the facial expressions are off, um, but. I can't. I can still get past that at this point. I think it is making uh, a progression as far as quality yeah. goes. Um, that's, we, what, that's what I was going to say. We, we did learn some things um, off air uh, mm-hmm. as far as the Gen X book goes, uh, which makes total sense. And I think th- there is a, a recovery there. And I'm, I'm glad that again with the story, the writing itself. Okay, yeah, I w- we, yeah, we can't. <laughs> Can't necessarily talk about what we learned off air, um, but yeah. it all it all makes sense on Gen X. Totally makes sense now, and I think if if it would have been on the the path that it should have been before, um, wow, you know, certain things got in the way. This would have been probably one of our tops book right off the bat. I think. Yeah, from from the beginning, this yeah. might have been one of our top books easily. Um, I'm sorry that it took, you know, the five issues of those growing pains, but I'm glad that it's, it's gotten to this point. Right. Uh, this is not necessarily what I wanted from the revived Gen X, but now that we're here, I'm happy that I have this. Um, I think this is this is where it needs to stay. So whenever I hear anybody tweet in or make their comments about, you know, loving Gen X and being curious like we are, like I want to know what's going on with Quentin. Where's, where's Quentin and Greco going to go? Yep. Um, I want to know how the conversation so between Nate the whole, and Benji. Probably, yeah, probably find out for at least. We probably find out for a while. Yeah, yeah. there'll be a few issues, but still, I, it's raising these questions and has these things that I want to know now. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what a, a good book should do. It should it should initially plant seeds, and then when it starts paying off and it starts answering those questions, it needs to raise more questions. Um, why you know when you as soon as you close some, some doors, you open some doors. Exactly. Exactly, and always thank you for that, Anthony. Uh, we have, and appreciate yes. everyone uh, sending in your fastball tweets this week. Uh, there's always awesome to read on air and uh, talk with you guys as well, uh, on air and off air. Um, good stuff. But yeah, that's the end of the episode 24. Um, I wish it 24. was. Uh, I wish it was an overall good week for us. Um, but there is one. I, I'm going to call gold somewhat of a stinker. Mm. Somewhat of a stink. It had a little, it had, it had, a, it had a little tang to it. Yeah, yeah. But I think it next could, week it, though, it could be worse. It, it could be. I think I know something that comes out next week, and if it is, it could be that book. I, 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 you, you probably haven't looked at what's coming out next week, have you yet? Nope, I have not. What comes out next week? Next week we have Jean Grey number nine. Okay. All right. All right. Old Man Logan number thirty-one. That's actually kicking off that new um, legacy arc. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. Um, X Men Blue number sixteen, kicking off that new mm. arc, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on that arc. Oh, wait a minute! Is that the one I think it is? Yes, it is. 
Oh my goodness! Is it next it is. week yet? Yes. Is it episode 23? It's 20, uh, it is. Yet? Technically, we only have two, three days until it comes out. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, but last, we do have Secret Warriors number nine. Uh, we are going to finish okay. out that um, Mr. Sinister arc to see where that all goes. Because um, magic, our homegrown magic is in there. Uh, so we want to see what's going on. You call it the Sinister arc, I call it the Dark Beast arc. <laughs> Dark Beast arc. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of both for sure. You just want to see more of Dark Beast. <laughs> yes, I did. I want to see more Dark Beast. Uh, but yeah, this could be next or this week, I should say, because we are technically um, it is Sunday when we're recording this, so Monday when you yep. hear this, it will be the start of the new week. Um, so hopefully this week we we do get a nine out of ten week um, all around. I hope as my dogs are yeah. starting to bark. Um, but with that being said, you got anything else? You want to go ahead and get out of here? Uh, no, no. I'll just go ahead and get out of here. All right, buddy. Well, everyone, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you again next week.